Elementor is great for building landing pages and you can create stunning looking pages without writing any code. Now, one other feature Elementor has, and that is the ability to create forms. So Elementor Pro, which is the paid for version, comes with its own form builder. So in this video, I will show you how to create a basic form using the form builder. Now, just a heads up, if you do click on any of the Elementor links below this video or in the tutorial and purchase the plugin, I will get a commission because all of those links are affiliate links. And so if you wanna support this channel and support the content, go ahead and purchase Elementor using one of the links. So if you wanna learn more about the form builder, well, just go to elementor.com slash features slash form dash builder, or just Google it. Anyway, let's jump into our WordPress site. So here is my WordPress site. And the only thing that I have done is that I have downloaded Elementor and also the pro version, set it up, and I've also gone ahead and created a contact us page. Now, if this is the first time you're using Elementor, then check out our getting started tutorial and you should find the link below this video. So I am going to assume that you have some type of experience with Elementor. The most important thing is just to have it set up. So let's go ahead and modify this contact us page. And you can see here, it is a pretty empty page. The only thing that, that I have done is just created it and added the title, which is contact us. And what I wanna do is show you how to add a simple contact us form to this page. Now, the first thing you wanna do is click on edit with Elementor, of course, because we are using Elementor. And then in the search widget section, search for form, and then simply click and drag that across. And straight away, we have a basic form with three fields, name, email, and message. And to edit, the form, what you wanna do is make sure you click on the widget and then here on the left-hand side, you can see some options. So we have name, email, and message. So these are our fields. If you wanna move them around, you can simply do so just by clicking it. Uh, if you wanna edit the field, then just click on the name and then here you can change the field type, label, placeholder, if it's required, and things like that. Let's now go ahead and add in a new select field. Now to do that, just click on add item and from the type dropdown, find select. And in the label, let's enter in technology. And from the options, now this will power the actual options in the dropdown. What you wanna do is add in the name first, a pipe and then the value. So here is an example. So here we have WordPress, which will be used as the label, and then we have a pipe, and then we have WordPress or lowercase, which will be used as the value. So the first one will be label and then value. And now if we take a look at our form on the right, we can see our new select option. And then if we click on update and then open up a new tab and let's go to our contact us page. And now we can see our form with our four fields, name, email, message, and also our technology select list. Let's now look at how to style the form because adding fields is one thing, making it look pretty is another. So let's go back into Elementor and let's first look at how to add fields next to each other. So like float them one to the left and then one to the right. Now, the easiest way to do that is to find the fields that you wanna float. So let's click on name first and then change the column width to 50% and then change email, which is the next one, over to say 50% as well. And that means that they will float next to each other nicely. And this is great for slimming down long forms, especially if you have a lot of fields. Then if we click update and go check it out, we can now see our two fields next to each other. And most importantly, if we resize, let's just resize this and see what happens when it's on mobile, you can see that the fields just pop below each other, which is perfect. The next thing you may wanna do is add in a required asterisk. Now, if we click on send, you'll see that the browser takes care of all the validation, but often it's a good idea to add an asterisk next to any required field. So users can see which fields are required before they click on the submit. Because I know personally, I don't like to fill out long forms 
And I especially do not like filling out forms where a whole bunch of fields are required, but you can't see if they are required. Now, to enable the asterisks, what you want to do is go back into Elementor, then scroll down and check required mark. Switch it on and let's make technology also required. Now to do that, just click on the field and then just turn on required. Update it. And now if we refresh and if we click on send, the browser will still do its own type of validation, but straight away, you can see which fields are required. Another bit of styling, which is common for forms, is changing the button. So to do that, let's go back into Elementor, then go to Style, and scroll down until you get to Buttons. And then here, you can change the button color, the size, the radius, the text padding. You can change a lot of stuff here. Let's change the background of the button. So click on Background Color, just below next and submit button and we'll change it to black and let's also change the label so instead of send we will select something like contact us now or something like that go back up to content and then click on buttons and then change the label in submit so instead of send let's add in contact now exclamation mark exclamation mark hopefully people will actually fill out this form and contact us. And then if we click on save and then check it out, we can now see our new button with a black background and also with a different label. So at this point we have a working form. Let's fill it out and see what happens. So if I type in my name, Ivan, and then put in a fake email, put in a message and let me select WordPress, click on contact now. And then we get this confirmation message, which tells us that our submission has been successful. But you may be thinking, where do these submissions go? Now to access these submissions, just go into the WordPress backend, then Elementor and then submissions. And here you will see all of the submissions. So if you have 20 odd forms, they will all be here. And from this page, you can see which page the submission came from, uh, which form, it was submitted and also some information about them. So if you click on view, you should see any of the custom fields right here. And if we go back, we can apply bulk actions to the submissions. You can also filter. And then here on the right, you can search the submissions. And most importantly, you can export all of the submissions out as a CSV. So if you want to do something else with them, like import them into another CRM or something, you can do all of that. But let's continue tweaking our form. And what I want to show you now is how to change that confirmation message. So to do that, let's close this tab and let's go back into Elementor, scroll down and then click on additional options all the way down at the bottom. Then turn on custom messages and let's change the success message. So we'll add in something like contact us, we'll reply within 24 hours, just something generic. Let's update that. And let's also change the style of the confirmation message because if we go back here, you will notice that the confirmation message is just a bit of text and it may easily be missed by the person submitting the form. So let's go back into Elementor, go to style, scroll down and then click on messages. Click on the pencil icon next to typography and let's increase the size to 24 and then set the weight to bold so it really pops. That's what people say with design, right? And then the success message color, let's make it a green. So it really stands out, a bit darker. There we go. Click on update. And now if we refresh, fill in the form quickly, and then click on contact now, we should get the confirmation message, which really stands out because it is a bigger size in font and also it is bold and also it's green. Now, a common feature of any form builder is the ability to redirect a user after they have submitted the form. Right now, if we click on the submit button, it simply shows us this confirmation message and that's it. But it is common to send users off to some other confirmation page, which then you can use to track the page views using some type of analytics. And the form builder makes it very easy to simply redirect users after they have submitted the form. Let me show you. 
So let's jump over to Elementor. And well, before we do that, let's actually go ahead and create a new page. So I'll go into pages and I'll call this one con confirmation page. You can call it whatever you want. It doesn't have to be controlled by Elementor. It just needs to be a page. And I'll copy the URL and let's go back into Elementor and then click on content. And then you want to click on actions after submit. So straight away here, you can see the two actions that are fired after a user submits the form. So by default, we have collect submissions, and that's why we can see the submissions in the section in the backend. And then it also fires off an email and it'll fire off an email to, I believe the site email. But if we click on the plus icon, what we can do is click on redirect and then we get another option right here. So it may not be obvious, but if you remove one of these actions, you will see that redirect automatically gets removed. But if you click on redirect or any of the other options, they do appear behind this drop down, and it can be pretty hard to see. But if we click on redirect, you will straight away see that we have a redirect option here. And all we need to do is simply put in the URL that we want to redirect the user to. Now, this can be an internal page, this can be an external page, but let's just redirect them to this internal page. Click on then update. And if we refresh this page, fill out the form and click on the submit button, we are redirected to the confirmation page. And then what you can do is configure your analytics tool to track how many page views this confirmation page has got and then you can kind of track how well your forms are doing. But before we jump on to other things, let's go back into the editor. And if we click on actions after submit, take note of all the other integration options you have here. So you can fire off a webhook. You can also send off another email and then you can send submissions to third party email providers or even CRMs. And also you can have a pop-up appear and you can send the submission data to Slack and Discord. So if you have to integrate your form with a third-party email provider, if it's a popular SaaS product, then chances are Elementor Pro integrates with it. Now, the final feature I wanna show you is how to create multiple steps or create multiple pages for your form. And this is a great way of breaking out a large form into multiple steps or items. Now to do that, make sure you are editing your form and then click on form fields and then click on add item. And from the type dropdown, you want to scroll all the way down and click on step. Now straight away, as soon as you add in a step field, you will notice that you get a field up the top here called item one and you get one down here called item six. Now these are automatically added in and I do believe that it's called item six because when he adds it all up, one, two, three, four, five, six, it is the sixth uh, field. Now, every single field below each step appears on that step. So for item one, we have number, email, message, and technology. So these fields will appear under the first step or item or page and pretty much nothing will appear under six. So what we need to do is let's add in another item. And what I wanna do is call this one contact and we'll call this one message. And the final one we'll call technology. So essentially we'll break out this form into three separate steps. And all we need to do is simply move message above the message field and the technology step just above technology. And then if we click on update and let's go back to our form. And here you can see that we have one and two, but we don't have three. Why is that? Let's jump back into Elementor and we have our technology select, which is correct. Oh, okay. This needs to be a step. So let's scroll down, select it as a step. There we go. We have one, two, and three. And you want to make sure that, yes, we have contact message and technology. Let's go back here, fill out the form. Then we click on next. Well, we have to put in a proper email address, add in a message, and we can also go back as well by clicking on previous. 
add in our message, click on next, select our final option, and we are redirected to our confirmation page. Okay, so that is a quick overview of the form builder in Elementor. But before we finish up, just one more thing I wanna show you. Let's go back to Elementor. Now, if this feels like too much work, having to create the forms and things like that, or you need some type of inspiration, what you can do is click on this folder icon, which is technically the template icon. And if you click on it, and from the category dropdown, search for, I believe, contact. Yes, contact. We will have template sections with forms in it. So here you can see we have a contact us section. And what you can do is insert this template into your page and then customize it. And if we also search for, I think it's newsletter. No, it's not. What is it? Subscribe. There we go. You also have subscription examples as well. So if you want to add in a nice subscribe to our newsletter down at the bottom of your page, but you don't want to design it from scratch because you can see here, this one is pretty intricate. It's got a nice little icon, header, information, and also the form below. What you can do is simply insert it into your page and then go ahead and simply customize it whichever way you want. So that is it from me. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn more about WordPress, check out our other videos or head over to webwash.net. If you do have a question, please leave a comment. Anyway, that is it from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.